but yes, I'm happy to be talking with y'all. Um, but first of all, let me say um, thank y'all for choosing me to have such a difficult conversation about. But I personally believe, especially since I've been doing this show, we need to have more difficult conversations because difficult conversations a lot of times bring about healing. When people yeah. have to talk about things they don't necessarily want to talk about, it's them getting out, it can be cathartic, and it can lead them towards the healing that they need. And um, I don't know if you guys know this, but 2021 has been all about me healing, me finding right. myself, accepting myself. You look myself. amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, that's definitely a compliment, a, a compliment coming from the two of y'all. <laughs> now, let me tell you, you do your pretty girl thing, and then Miss Lace, and then Miss Lacey over there, superhero strong, box, <laughs> and, and, out and all that. So we're going to get into it because I know you two t today want to come on here. Um, one on one. This is our latest episode, you guys, and it is entitled "Marriage, Forgiveness, and Fidelity." Lacey and Freshie, for those of you that don't know and haven't been following along, they recently had an issue within their marriage. Um, something that comes up in a lot of marriages: um, an issue of infidelity. Um, Freshie confessed that she cheated on Lacey, and it got onto social media, and everybody had their opinions. And you know, since then, they've been. Thank you for buying a badge, A to D Dream. I appreciate that. Um, since then, they have pretty much, you know, talked about things that are going on between them. So today, we want to kind of talk about that a little bit, where they are, where they're going, and the process of forgiveness for each one of them, because it's a collective thing, it's an individual thing, too. So yeah. we're going to get into it tonight, all right? So let's get to it. Okay. <laughs> the first question that I want to ask is, why not keep this between yourselves? Why let this leak onto social media? I think... When I first got onto Facebook and I logged on and I saw that I was mortified. Um, people like myself and you guys who are influencers or in the public, I always feel like we should try to craft some kind of image. And then I was like, bam, it's on this Facebook profile. Bam, it's on this Facebook profile. It's in a story. And I'm just like, oh no, please stop putting this out there because then the comments started. So why yeah. let you come onto social media instead of just keeping it between yourselves? I was mad. <laughs> like, I was like, I get, you know, and I'm always, anytime that we've talked or whatever, I'm super huge with protecting your badge. I mean, your your brand, <laughs> protecting your brand and being strategic in your movement, right? I always, I tell everybody that. But I was like heartbroken. I was angry. Um, and I just was like, I want to blast this bitch. Oh, I'm about to cuss on no, you. No, but like, no. that's how I felt. Like, I was like, I want to blast this bitch. That's Fuck real. these hoes. <laughs> like, like, at first, when I let the world know what she did. Humiliated. Because even though the world didn't know, people around us knew. And she had no tact for me. So I was like, I don't owe you anything or this hoe over here and Lacey just <laughs> and then from there it was like oh shucks okay wait a minute if we're gonna work this out um we gotta figure this out because because what I did then was I did and I don't mind putting you know issues out there I think too many influencers only put the good stuff out but mm -hmm. what I did was I created a problem for our brand, right? So mm -hmm. now if we're gonna be hosting events, now if we're gonna be places, we were invited to New Orleans Gay Pride, so we were gonna be there together. And I did put this out in like the, the angry way that I did put it out, yeah. and people were confused, <laughs> like. Yeah. So then from there, we did have a conversation um, with each other, a few conversations where we decided, you know what, let's, let's take these lemons and make some lemonade and let's just let people know that this does happen and let's try to shift the narrative so that people do understand this is something you can try to work through. I, I, I like that. Um, couples, let's be very clear about something. I tell people this all the time. Any couple that you think is perfect has framed it to be picture perfect, that there is no perfect couple. Couples yeah. argue. Couples have disagreement. Any two people that live together and share intimate space like that, sharing their lives so intertwined, are going to have yeah. disagreements. It's going to be yeah. strange. It's going to be situations. The infidelity is just one of the situations that kind of comes up between couples. But what I think, and like you said, as influencers, we need to showcase it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But at the same time, 
the judgment, the comments, the harassment that come along with that is quite painful because it invades every area of your life. People don't just keep it on social media. They feel like they can walk up to you and say, hey, that was really stupid for you to do that. Yeah. Like, I, you don't know me, but no, you, you made me know you. You put right. yourself out there. Yeah. And you, have, you, said you have a brand or whatnot. What, is, what do you say to some of the people who said that the only reason you two are forgiving each other or are trying to make up is because it's business. It's about a brand. And even more so, even more damning, y'all did it for promo. Y'all did it for oh. clap. Uh, well, hold on. Before you answer, because I, I do want her to answer this, but I'm going to tell you why I want her to answer it is because last night she actually asked me, are you staying with me uh, because of the brand? Like, is this some lacy strategy? And you just ain't told me about it. And she was, she's, she's been really insecure about this. Like, mm -hmm. she reached out to my manager. <laughs> was talking, like, just let me know. So, yeah. Wow. Well, that question also stems back because people feel like when we first got together, it was just for publicity and just for promo and marketing mm -hmm. and things like that. And that's just been a constant battle. And I feel like they're using this as another reason to say we're trying to do stuff for attention. And we even talked earlier today, we've only done one video ever that we actually- no. Yes, we did. We didn't do that video for attention. We just did Well, we do because it was going to be popular. Right. Which is just a kissing challenge. But other than that, like, we don't, we haven't done anything. So I just have chosen to not really respond to anybody, really, because y'all don't, y'all are making y'all own narratives. We have done nothing and have said nothing, and we're not doing anything uh, for the attention. Y'all, she cheated on me. Yeah. No, like she really cheated on me, y'all. Like, like they think that that's just really they don't even think that I cheated on her. You know what I'm saying? Like they don't believe that I genuinely had an affair and that we're even coming up with that storyline for attention. Yeah, awesome. I mean, um, you know, when it comes to staying together and and working things out in in reality, yeah. it, just be honest, as a grown ass adult, right? There are a lot of different reasons why why people stay together. Like you have to bunch them all together. I'm not saying there's a bunch of different reasons. Well, well let's say this. Let's say this. Let's say this. But people don't realize that marriage is also a business. Period. Your finances. Well, I'm not well, saying. I'm just saying. Like, it's like, also no, a business. This is even for people who don't necessarily own together a business. You, you asked the question about that. Yeah. But it's just like, this is my wife. Like, I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. Like, obviously, I want to make, I, I want this to work. And I want to show you that I am sorry. I'm genuinely sorry. Like, I don't want to lose you. Like, you're, like, when people, I get frustrated. And I know that I can come off more defensive because they don't understand the genuine bond that we have because it's a choice. It's a choice to stay together. It I is. mean, but could you understand, yeah, like, why they don't? No, I can understand, for sure. I can understand it, but that's why I'm either going to give you, I, at this point, it just, I, I get angry faster. We're so. staying together because we do believe that our marriage is worth saving. Yeah. With that, our relationship has become our brand. So yes. we still have to protect that. Yes. But I, I'm, I would be fine without her, and she'll be fine without me. We were fine before we knew each other, so... Right. Um, somebody made a comment. Um, Alexis Esquire, she said cheating is a choice, too. Agreed. I mean, it's definitely yeah, a choice. I don't think anybody's denying that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cheating is definitely a choice. But like you said, um, choosing to forgive is a choice. Choosing yeah, to yeah. make a choice. And then I know recently, Alexis, I saw that she pointed out, she said that um, normalize not calling. Let me go back a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Let's normalize not being perfect. It's not an explanation for infidelity. Um, it's not an explanation for it, but it can be a cause of it. People make mistakes. Yeah. People make mistakes. And that's People what I want decisions. to do when I do this. How do I get rid of the comments? No, we're not going to get rid of the comments. We're just going to talk. Because we're going <laughs> to do this. We're going to have it out. And so for me, like an outside looking in, like you guys have painted, like you said, the picture of a really strong relationship. But at the same time, some people have to ask is, do you guys really feel like you know each other? You got together so quickly, and then you got together like freshly right after an engagement, you know, to your previous fiance. What do you say when they say that? No, Mira. I feel like I feel like sometimes you just meet somebody and it's right for you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think it's unfair at first that people are bringing her past relationship into this because you can be with somebody for ten years and not have the same bond with them that you have with somebody you've only known for six months, right? That's a thing. We're grown ass people, we know that that's a thing. So um, I think we met each other and it just, it felt, 
it just felt it different. Felt like I, yeah. I had holes when I met her, y'all. <laughs> you know, but I'm, like I had holes and I met her and without her having to ask me, I just wanted to cut my holes off. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it was just, it was just like an instant thing. And then going through what, what we've gone through uh, personally, privately, we both knew when we got together the kind of relationship that we did want. So all of that waiting 10 years, it, it wasn't gonna be a thing because we knew that we wanted to find a life partner. We knew that we wanted marriage and family and build business. And we knew that we wanted that integrated into our lives when we met. So, you know, hmm? Well, you know, you know. And yeah, then, I mean, but, you were one of the first people who saw us. Yeah. Before we even told the world, right? Right. Y'all came over to my house, and um, I remember I was like, "Oh, hey, Freshie." I was like, "Hey, I know this girl. This is Lacey." She's like, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Oh." And he was like, "Well, you're the first person now. This is exclusive." Like, hey, my yeah. Yeah. But even using that as an example is just like the love that you felt in, even in that moment, and the first times that you've been around us when we first got together. It's just been genuine. It's been natural since day I, one. I and I do it. think, I do think that it's extremely unfair for people also to say that she ruined my ex's relationship like my previous relationship oh my as well God. like it's just now, people first off, people let's, this clarify that. let's clarify that because people have said that to me before and let's be clear about something the two relationships are not crisscross they're not intersect they there never did yeah between no. no no matter how small no. it was the two that you were not messing with Lacey while you were in your last relationship let's go i think clarify. the only reason why they're getting confused is because we went to a networking event no that's not why they're getting confused because you was in a relationship and then you was in another relationship oh. and so it's confusing. Like, I mean, yeah, but I just, <laughs> but it never, it never, no, it never, it never, no. No, I didn't. Know I, I haven't, that. I haven't had like one actual conversation with her when I was with my ex ever. Mm -mm. And it was okay. a week after the fact that I actually started talking to her. So it's like. Okay. No. So let's, um, let's go ahead and dive into, you know, what actually transpired. So fresh, um, the young lady that this incident happened with um, is somebody who is also a member, a cast member on your show, Gifted. Um, she was a cast member, yes. She was. Okay, she was. I'm sorry, she was a cast member on Gifted. And that's how you two met, correct? Um, initially, it was because uh, I wanted, I saw her music on another show, and I wanted to feature her yeah. music on the show. And from that conversation, we found, I found out she also wanted to act as well. And that's how that transpired okay and Lacey how did you is this how you met said girl yeah she was so bomb and she was so nice when I met her on I was just um I wasn't filming that day I just was on set with Kia while they were filming because you know she was just like just be there with me and I met her and I was like oh my gosh I love you you're you're great okay so when did this become um a sexual a sexual situation um were there instances before um this initial area of cheating or was it just that one incident? Um, so, what? Okay, so I'm really big with like, you don't mess with your cast or your crew, right? I'm super huge on that. Um, but when she came at us, like, I've never been with girls before, but like, I really like, like, I like you guys. Like, I like, I, I, I am like obsessed. I really like you guys. Um, I've I've had all types of experiences in life, <laughs> right? I've done it three or four or five times, okay? Name it, I've done it. Um, but my wife didn't have those same experiences. And I I don't feel like just because um, you're dating somebody means that you can have those experiences, if that makes sense. It's just about communicating. So we were just dating at the time, or we were engaged. Mm -hmm. And uh, this girl was like, she was pressing hard, so... I was like, well, let's just, I don't know, let's just have some fun and just see what happens. And um, Kia was like, nah, <laughs> she wasn't really. And, um, and so they spent a night together a year ago now um, and without me. Well, you were at home. But yeah, yeah, but it was, it was without me. And okay. then a few months later, she and I spent a night together without Kia. But it was really because Kia got mad and left. So I don't know. I mean, not left the house, but like left the bed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, okay. but then after that, Kia was like, "This ain't this ain't it. This ain't for me. I good luck with you in your life, but no." Um, and then we just parted ways. 
uh, a couple of months ago this year, mm -hmm. um, she moved, she moved into a condo and we were going to use her condo to film some scenes. And then that's when we started all speaking again. And then okay. from there, it was just kind of like, she just was like, I just want to be friends with you guys. Like, we don't got to, you, you know, do that. I just adore you guys. I want to be around you guys. I like your energy. I don't have a lot of friends, you know, whatever. And here's Lacey, like, let's just hang out with her. <laughs> and so, and Kia was like, I don't know. But um, so we started hanging out with her. And then just getting to know her, because we didn't really get to know her before, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, getting to know her, I was like, dang, like, like, I really trust you as like a good friend, you know, for me. And um, we hung out with her and her, her girlfriend at the time, like, it, like, we were all planning couples trips together. We were really just friends, nothing more, nothing less. Okay. You know, to, to, <laughs> to my understanding. Well, it shifted away from being something sexual or even romantic, it's just a platonic friendship type situation after those initial times that y'all agreed to do yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, 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 yeah. You agreed to open it up and do stuff together. So yeah. tip over to um, being platonic, mm -hmm. and then where does the shit hit the fan? Where is it like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened? I don't know, because I wasn't there. OK, where were you, Lacey? I don't know. I mean, I didn't think this was happening, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, where, when I say where were you, where were you like physically? Like, where, oh, where were you here. in another country? Were here. you in another state? Were you down the street? Were you next door? I don't know when they, I, she, you have, this, part, this, part, this part is for her, because All right. the girl's unaware. Well, I mean, go ahead and take the wheel. Um, obviously, I co-signed, and I agree with everything she just said. It was just the moment that we just started hanging out with her more often, I didn't realize, I mean, Looking at everything now, I'm trying to understand how I got to where I got anyways. So I'm realizing that when we were hanging around each other so much, I didn't realize that I started to actually like her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like being around you. I like, when we go out, I would say, let's, let's, let's invite her, you know, things like that. Like, um, but I didn't realize that it was a different, you know what I'm saying? I didn't realize what was transpiring. And so, right. let's see what you for. Because you said, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. Wait, so, so it makes sense or it doesn't make sense? It does make sense. It does okay. make sense. Just so saying, like um together you guys form an attraction and um a relation a, a relationship of sorts. You yeah. want them to come around, you and you like the vibe. Um so yeah, you know, a couple months ago, whatever like that, you know, I ended up expressing to her like kind of where I was at in the whole three way thing because she would even still have conversations as well as about the relationship that we did have once before and like just drop those little comments or whatever sorry so i'm not wearing mascara carry on <laughs> um so yeah so for me when i opened up that portal i also fucked up because i didn't communicate with her before i said it to her and after i said it to her or anything that i felt during the time i wasn't communicating any of that with her at all um or directly not fully transparently so um i ended up creating the mess that I was in myself, just based based off not communicating. Period. Um, and I, there was things that I that I was looking for, and I, I I went I selfishly went to go find them without communicating to my partner. Can, can you talk about a little bit more about what you were looking for? Because that's like no. a, that's a vague statement. Can you? What were you looking for more that you weren't necessarily that you didn't feel at the time you were getting from your wife? Um. I didn't feel as emotionally connected as I wanted to be or understood or acknowledged. Um, you know, just, I don't want to go into those details. I mean, I understand. Well, okay, well, let's ask this question. At any point in time, did you communicate those needs that you felt like you were missing to Lacey before this all transpired? Um, again, I don't think that I, I wasn't communicating with her as transparently i was saying things or i'll like drop things here and there or whatever but to the extent like, that i was actually strange. feeling it to the extent that i was actually feeling it um it wasn't it wasn't coming out right so okay okay Lacey, do you feel like maybe there's some hints of something you missed like maybe you didn't read between the lines is there anything that you noticed was going on differently with her because like i know i noticed and this is for me myself and it, i don't even feel like it has anything to do with zodiac because me and you are both aquarius and whatnot I always notice a change instantly in somebody I'm dating with or my partner. It's yeah. like, 
am I not giving you something? Like we can let's I'm like, let's just check in. Um yeah. what's going on? Am I doing something wrong? Are you doing something wrong? Am I not? Do I need to do this? What can I, what can I do to make things as hard as it can be between the two of us? You're, you're right. That is, that's how I operate in my dealings with people and also in my marriage. Um, no, she, I would be lying if I said she even changed her, her temperament while she was doing what she was doing. I think, you know, when it first happened, when it was happening and I, you know, whatever, I didn't know. Um, and we were all still together. It was the same. It was the, she was still giving me the same attention. Like I had no, I genuinely had no idea. It wasn't until I was in Colombia where her personality changed, where she was just, she just didn't seem to give a fuck. I'm not gonna lie to you, like she didn't. I was in Colombia, stressed about Colombia, stressed about other things, stressed about my business. And my wife just didn't care. And conversations that we had had prior or, you know, whatever, it was just like, what, like, in, but in my mind, you know, and I'm, I'm asking her, like, what is the problem? Why are you being so mean? Why are you, why are you, what is happening? You know, because I don't know, because I'm all the way there. She's here. I can't just grab her and look at her in her face and be like, just talk to me. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't do it when I was in Colombia. But I think that was, that was the only time that honestly... I feel like there was a, 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 a disconnect. disconnect. But at the time, <laughs> it what she was saying was, oh, I think it's just, I think it's just a space. I just miss you so much. So, so yes, you did. I did miss you. But... Yeah, no, you did. And yes, you did. Uh, so I was confused. Now, I remember talking to my friends like, I'm confused. Can y'all, can y'all talk to her? Because <laughs> I don't feel like she's really talking to me. Um, and that was, that was the first time I realized the disconnect. And then right before I came back, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. So the situation happens, Freshie, the situation happens between you and the young lady while Lacey isn't around. Uh, how did you find out Lacey? Freshie, did you tell her? Did you confess it or so, did you with somebody else? Um, I do want to clarify something that they were saying in the comments about this divorce right. thing. So. I did leave a part out in that. I felt like at that point, our relationship is just getting slowly and slowly. I felt like she was checking out, but that's just me talking about my feelings. Okay. And in the midst of all of this stuff happening, um, we got into an argument, you know, and she, she did ask me for a divorce, but she didn't say, go give me the papers tomorrow. But just the fact of you asking, just, I've already felt like you were checking out from my side, I already felt like you're checking out. I feel like you didn't care about my emotions. I felt like you just, you know, and then you asked me for a divorce on top of that. I'm not saying that, I'm not trying to use that as an excuse, but internally it did. It hurt. It, 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 yeah, so. You felt like you got punched in the chest. I mean. Yeah, but after that we had a conversation and we were trying to fix our relationship and fix problems and we had a genuine was, conversation it's afterwards. It's important to know that, because he still asked the question and I'm gonna answer it. Me too. Um, when I asked for that divorce, it was because I felt like I was trying so hard to save my marriage and she wasn't. And two days later, we had a conversation and it was like, I, I don't, I don't want to not, I don't want to not be with you, but if you don't want to be with me, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want, I want to work on our relationship. So her throwing that out there, well, it wasn't like we were in a deep conversation. Anyways, about your question, how I found out. Um, I can tell. I, I, um, before, we before we say this, it's just, it's sad and it's deep that, you know, to people like y'all are together, y'all in the same house and same bed. And it's just like, it was just this disconnect right here. And it's kind of like, wow. Like, I, I, yeah, but go yeah. ahead. Um, so I came back from Columbia. And the entire time I'm there, you know, we're going through it because I felt like she was just being mean or she wasn't, she wasn't my wife that I'm always, like, I've always had. Anyway, so yeah, I um, came back from Columbia and um, I didn't have my phone because one of the girls I was flying with, she broke her phone, but she got stuck in Florida or yeah, she couldn't get through customs or whatever happened, right? So mm -hmm. I left my phone with her because I had already talked to my wife 
about picking me up from the airport. I was good. So I left my phone. So she went, she woke up the next morning, uh, the day after I got back, and she went to go pick that girl up from uh, the airport because she got on a different flight. Um, and I didn't have my phone, but I was supposed to be on set that morning. So Kia was like, I'll take you. And I was calling her um, to talk to her about the fact that I had to be, or I was trying to call her to talk to her about the fact that I had to be on set. I had a question to ask her. I, I, I think it was just taking her a long time. So I was just like, let me just call her real quick, or whatever. And uh, she had my laptop, so I couldn't have called her from my laptop because, <laughs> because she had it in the car with her because we didn't bring any bags inside. And uh, my, my, my computer was not turning on. And I was like, this is crazy. I actually went to bed and I was like, fuck it, I'll just wait. And I was laying in bed. I happened to look over. I saw her Apple Watch and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll just call my phone from her watch because then she'll get it at this. The, I live five minutes from the airport, so I knew that she had my phone. Um, but then I was like, let me just figure out what's going on with my wife. Like, I know that we've talked, I know that we've, but I don't know, like, let me just figure out what's going on, you know, on my wife. And, um, I was just opening her messages. Kid you fuck not, bro. I'm opening my, me like her messages just to see if she had like talked to somebody about what we were going through because she typically will reach out to people. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was like, maybe I'll get some insight. <laughs> And so one of the first messages I saw was from this girl. I didn't think they were like sleep. I didn't think like I had, I had no idea. I really had no idea. Um, I just thought, okay, well shoot, let me just see if she talked to her about it. And she, no, uh, they were talking about other things. And uh, I, yeah. yeah uh Mm. I get it. Um, I think Alexis actually says a little bit. She said, what it all boils down to is that Freshie fucked another woman without Lacey knowing about it. So that's because I want to ask a question. This is the thing that gets me a lot of times about whether it's an open situation or even if it's an open relationship, which you guys at the time were not in an open relationship or allowing open situations. So it, y'all, because the thing about it is I tell people this, I'm very open with what it is that I do. I've dated couples before. I've gone to situations where I've been a third for a couple, but I wouldn't allow anybody to come into my situation because I can trust myself going into their situation, but I can't trust you coming into my situation. And um, then there are rules that I notice that every couple has. Like, okay, we don't do this. We don't do this. This is what we is. Mm -hmm. You abide by those rules and everything is supposed to be peachy keen. Um, and so the part that described as cheating, you guys, is like when um, she said it happened between... Freshie and the girl, and she wasn't involved. She wasn't aware. So whatever rule or contract they had between each other, the three of them was broken at that point. So that's where that comes in. At. Um, yeah, we weren't dating at the time, you guys. We were just literally friends. Like, there was no... And, and, and also, I want to point out this, too. Um, they said a marriage bed is undefiled, and what goes on in it is between those two people. When they decide to bring somebody into their situation, that's between those two people and whatever consequences thereof, you know, that's just what they endure. So um, we're not going to judge them about doing that. Um, polyamory actually works for some people, and we need to mm -hmm. respect that and know that. So let's just be very clear about that. Right. People are allowed to explore if they want to. If they don't want to and be monogamous, that's completely okay. No way is right and no way is wrong. It's all mm -hmm. about what rules you put into place. So let me just go ahead and clarify that, because I don't want this to be a whole hate thing right here about against polyamory. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are. And they are. I will refuse to take responsibility for her actions, y'all. Well, stop it. It's not for everybody. It's not, it's not for everybody. But that's not so, what we were doing when this happened either. Right. That needs to be very clear. That this was before we got married. This was lit like, this is not what we were doing. And this is not our relationship. And this is not normal everyday practice. And but let me tell you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't necessarily even have to explain so much that part right there. Because um, what you said, what you, you guys said earlier, it was like, okay, I was able to initially be like, okay, well, this is what happened. I got it. Like, I got it. Somebody with common sense and able to put the components of a puzzle together. Um, because I don't want this to be a situation where I hear and see some people say, well, Freshie didn't necessarily want it. Lacey forces on her. Freshie's a grown woman. And I know Freshie personally. And she will tell you real quick when she is not going to do something. Let's be very clear about that. <laughs> this, um, on Lacey's part, this is something that she offered. She could have said no and it have been like, okay, well, you don't want to do this. I'm with you. We together. Yeah. Which is what we did. It's just what we did. So let's 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 stop that type of shaming right there, because that's not something I want to tolerate, especially not on my life per se. Um, right. Now moving forward, so the situation happens. 
Um, basically, like I said, you got onto social media and sweetheart. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read um, a little bit, you know. Oh, God. Like, I, because, like, you know, you was on Facebook, there's on Instagram. So, um, Instagram stories, it says, I'm tired of being the only one. You throw up the peace sign. Um, it said, I would rather be alone with dignity than a relationship that requires me to sacrifice my self respect. I was like, whoa. This says, every single time someone hit on me, I turned them down and told my wife. If I felt like we weren't working, and even for a second thought about lying with anyone else, I leaned on my wife instead of them, including her little girlfriend. I should fuck everybody. Fuck it. I'm done, y'all. That was a lie. Yeah. You're right. Okay? That and look, what you guys don't know about me is I am good for a pull-up. And I, <laughs> like, <laughs> I know the way that I am set up is just be happy that I posted my emotions on social media and not fuck this girl up because that's growth. But yeah, that's how I was feeling. I, I feel like um, I have felt like, I'm not gonna say I currently feel, but I have felt like, you know, um, first I, I, was, I was done. I let her know when I first met her, one of the things that I don't think I can ever come back from is cheating, right? Um, loyalty is important to me because I know how loyal I am. So if I feel like you're not loyal to me, I'm I'm quick to peace out. Like ask anybody, right? I'll let a person go. I don't need anybody in my life that way. Um, I'm good with myself. So at first, you know, that anger that anger hits you, and then you start to blame yourself. Like you start to ask yourself, well, what did I do wrong? What wasn't I doing right? Why didn't there? We've had plenty of conversations where she's had to tell me like, stop taking the blame because this isn't you because you did everything you were supposed to do. Um, because that, that, you know, that feeling, that feeling sets in as well. And then after that, you go through a feeling of just extreme internal sadness. And when I told her, I don't necessarily feel like I have a reason to stay right now. Um, but I will give you the opportunity to give me a reason to stay. I will give you an, oppor an opportunity to show me that you're sorry, to make me understand, you know, what's happened. Like, I will give you the opportunity to do that. Um, I feel like she didn't necessarily, she wasn't doing it. She just okay. wasn't doing it. And it made me feel like I'm the only one here then making any effort. Me staying here, me sitting here, me being able to talk about this this is effort from me and this yeah. is a lot of fucking effort reading let me tell let's, let's be very clear about that it takes a lot of bravery to do what we're doing right here yeah you two in particular are doing to open up what happened between the two of you um such a public forum you open yourself up to the world this is a social yeah. media yeah. platform so anybody in my settings are wide open can jump on and be like oh this is what's going on yeah so i can really understand that um my thing is, okay, so this happened. So the days that after you found out, like I said, when the social media tirade, um, what point during those days did you decide to be like, after being so angry, you was like, okay, let me get us another chance. Like, like what, first, what did you, what, what, what did you, what did you say? You know, I'm sure you apologized a thousand times. Cause I saw, I was on your profile, Freshy, you know, and I was reading it, and I know I saw you kept apologizing. I messed up. I messed up. I can't believe I did this. This is so crazy. It's so dumb. My only issue with I, I love that you admit like, okay, hey, I fucked up. This was a messed up situation. What I didn't like though is the people cat calling down below in the comments like, okay, yeah, you stupid for doing this. You doing that. You had the best this. You had the best that. I don't need you to kick me when I'm down. Yeah. I don't need you doing that. It's bad enough I got this on social media. I don't need you to kick me when I'm down. Especially in a situation where it's like, you know, they don't necessarily know you personally, but because they feel like they know you personally, they're going to come in personally. These are people and behind that, the and that, they want to say. That's okay. Like, that's not okay. Well, uh, you know, but when you do open yourself up for scrutiny, you're going to be scrutinized. And... But let the scrutiny, if you're going to scrutiny, let it come from a place of help. Say, hey, yeah, you know, you, I, like, I, like I said, the first year I said, you know, we all make mistakes. People yeah. mess up. The question is, how do we fix them? How do we move forward for him? Because it's already been done. So what do I do now? Yeah. And that's the end of it. So at what point did you two decide, hey, okay, let's try to forgive. Let's try to move through this. And let's see what's up. So there's a couple of things that I've been wanting to say. 
Um, right. One of them is I don't like the reason why, you know, there's only three people that you can receive from me at this point right now. I'm either going to be extremely emotional, I'm going to get angry, or like, I'm just going to be sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, when I'm saying like online, you know what I'm saying? So like, when people are now coming at her for like being up and down, and sometimes we go on on dates, and sometimes she hate me, the next time she's just <laughs> like, oh my God, I can't believe my wife did this, but she's still trying to make it work. It's unfair for them to be coming and attacking her. And then I get more defensive because I'm just like, y'all, Stop. Like, at least we're, we're opening it up because we want to show y'all and be transparent. And that's the genuine part. So now y'all right. think that we're doing it for clout. And it's just like, no, like, stop. Now I get angry so I can't answer questions the way I want to. But for, for this situation, honestly, bro, I, I don't think it's anything that I've done or said that made that click switch about for her to decide I want to make this work. It was her. It was her decision. It's still her decision. So people shouldn't be shaming her for wanting to try to make her marriage work as well. And I'm not going to sit here and not be honest about my fuck ups, but I'm trying to focus on fixing my marriage. And I even, we, we, you know, we watch, uh, you, we, we're, we're watching things and we're doing our own growth or whatever. And on one of the re more recent videos that we watched was a, a, a married couples podcast. They said that, you know, there's this thing in an anchor. When there's infidelity, there's this anchor. An anchor exists. Uh, and the anchor is going to be the cheating and the affair and the baggage that comes with that, the sadness, the emotions, the anger that comes with that. And the person that caused it is the one that's running the furthest away from the actual anchor. And they're trying to move forward. They're trying to progress their relationship. They're focusing on the future. They're focusing on right. trying to get out of it and stop trying to talk about what happened. But then you're leaving your partner who's still stuck to this anchor that every single day they're stuck in these emotions. One thing, she can be normal and then something can trigger her. Like, is this, but we're, and we're talking all day, every day. Yeah. So it's like, mm. like, it's just like, you can't, you can't expect to help this person get out of this anchor or to release the anchor if you're over here focusing on that. So we're both going through our own processes. We're, we're both understanding where each other is at, are at in their process. Um, but I'm not leaving my wife behind. Like, so I'm, I will go back and I'll say things and I'm sorry that I get defensive on social media, but it's just like, damn, we, we, we decided to let you guys in on our journey. And now y'all are shitting on us too, which is fine because y'all are the internet. Y'all can do whatever y'all want. But the reality is the we're just, reality is just being genuine. Like you get to make the decisions that you want to make. Yeah. yeah. Whether it works for everybody else or not. It's about you too. And what you yeah. do for your lives. Um what well, as two things that I wanted to say. The first thing is people some people are saying like we shouldn't this shouldn't have been on social media, go social media, this is not good for the community or whatnot. Let's talk about the community, quote unquote, for a second. Um I see <laughs> videos where you guys uh where we're fighting <laughs> i see yeah. videos where we are uh, tearing up property i see videos where we are reading each other for filth why don't we see videos where a situation happens and we work through it and we try to forgive so we can show something different so i, I want to have conversations like this yeah. like i said before difficult conversations are difficult they're not fun to have but no. they can bring feeling about where you see an example of okay i'm going through something similar like this with my person perhaps i should try um, Alexis pointed out, she said that um, forgiveness is not necessarily reconciliation. And that's right. That's absolutely true. Forgiveness and reconciliation can be mutually exclusive or they can be combined together. In this situation for these two people in this relationship, forgiveness and reconciliation are together. So that's not something to be painted or blanket across the board. Because sometimes you need to get the fuck on. Let's just yeah. be very clear about that with some situations. Um, the yeah. next thing um, I wanted to say, the, the next thing I wanted to say um I'll talk about is are you guys seeking any professional counseling like marriage counseling yeah so we actually oh my god okay you know i love some good tea i can't help you y'all let me just tell y'all so we started seeing a therapist i got back on a friday i think we started seeing a therapist that month or was it that monday yep yeah so i got back on friday found out on saturday she found us a therapist that monday right and we started going to therapy and we we initially wanted a black um lesbian mm -hmm. woman right we, you know we felt like she would understand our everyday life and be able to really speak to us and help us um first of all she wasn't that professional but we actually left that therapist because she wasn't very professional but she also 
told us a story in while we were actively in therapy y'all she said you know what i was talking to my friends yesterday about you guys my yeah my friends are fans of of you guys and so she then from there googled us and watched some of our videos and let her friends tell her kind of how they felt about us and our relationship she says that she didn't tell them that she was seeing us or whatever but just that was did y'all record, record her ass that is completely no, I didn't. <laughs> well so i don't think that she said it as if uh she was she opened the conversation yeah. up to say hey i'm seeing lacy and freshie as my clients what happened was they were talking about the lack of or just the film industry with the lgbtq and lesbian filmmakers and her friend said i actually watched this couple lacy and freshie productions have you heard about it seen it? and they started looking at her work and that's how she knew that the two was there so no, we didn't report her because it wasn't like she, she went to her, went to her friends and just said, oh my God, I guess what I'm, you know. too close to home. Yeah, it was too close. And I, I didn't like that. From there, my, we my thing is this. My thing is this. At any point in time, did she even let her friends know that she was treating you? She, she said did? no. Yeah. We asked. She said no. But it's just that then, for us, that was too close to home. I didn't want nobody. I didn't want, I, before we started this, I didn't want anybody that knew us at all. So it was already going to be tough to try to find a black lesbian person in Atlanta that wasn't going to find out who we were or didn't yeah. already know. So what were you about to say, baby? So now we're looking for um, another therapist. But what's crazy is there's this app. Oh, God, I wish I knew the Last name. Last name. What's it called? Last name. I, I, I'm well, sorry, y'all. I'm still stuck. I'm still <laughs> no, we were stuck. Let's, let's, let's we were stuck. So when... Because the thing about it is she... He, she she said she started talking about you know different lesbian black lesbians you know and filmmaking or whatnot. Um, being that she's also a therapist or whatnot, and being that people have their girl talk and they talk with their friends or whatnot, I'm sure at some point in time she said I'm treating such and such, and then they watched the videos and said such and such, yeah. and she could have said she's doing for research purposes, but no girl, that's like a yeah, that's to be the so, talk of the party. But then she in the same session was talking about her wife being in the industry and her wife does and her ex-wife so yeah, ex hmm? yeah yeah yes it was just weird so we left that therapist so we've gotten that question a couple of times are we seeking help and we have said uh we were but we aren't and that's the reason why we left that particular therapist but honestly having gone through that oh, what i realized the, is the that bar, relationships Make sure you put that link. Um, Bean yeah. Bar, please do me a favor and DM me that link because I've heard of them before. It's and really I'll good. Over to Lacey and Freshie, okay? We have, oh, uh, we have, we have Lasting. Okay, yeah, well, we've seen that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what we realized is relationships are relationships, and love is love. And I think for for somebody to help us get through what we've been going through, we need somebody who knows how to navigate couples. Period. So Period. I'm not super stuck with it. It has to be a, a black lesbian yeah. anymore. Nah. I'll take a old well, white guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, just like my boy Byron Jamal. Genuine. You know what I mean? For for us now, that's where we are. But wait, I do want to. Can I just go back real quick? Go right ahead. You asked um, what what point did we decide to work things out? Yeah. And I I really want to make sure that I'm that question because it's it's a really important question it's very like it's, important. it's, it's very the important. most important question um well, this is what we do right black people we love to do this we love to down talk couples who get divorced because they didn't reach that 20 year mark that our grandparents did right we love that shit we love that shit but then we also love to tell black women that if you go through any kind of hurt in your relationship or grief, that you should just leave, right? We love to tell black women that. I think that at some point, at some point it's important to realize that your one marriage is made up of two people. And even though we said those vows, even though we are in a relationship, there is a, an, um, an, an expectation, right, of fidelity. <laughs> There's an expectation of honesty. There's an expectation of perfect communication all the time. If you're honest with yourself, you will realize that that doesn't happen nine times out of 10. And I think that you have to sit with yourself because there isn't any one particular thing that she said. 
And if you guys follow me, then you guys know that every day in the morning, I can wake up feeling great. And then at night, I'm down all over again, yeah. right? Because it is an emotional roller coaster that I'm on. I'm genuinely actively on it. But, but if your expectation is that your partner is going to be perfect, your entire relationship, mentally, you're 15. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. you haven't reached a, a place sorry, in your sorry. adult life where you're able to say, I'm willing to have an adult relationship. Right. And one of the reasons why we have put this on social media is because somebody made a comment that said this, this, this situation is hurting our community. It's not, it's not because, and I've said this so many times, and I'm going to keep saying it. When I was looking for couples to watch mm -hmm. just to get some insight on how I Brandy. can get past my own belief that I was supposed to have a perfect relationship. When I was looking for couples that could just say something that in my mind clicked where I could find a, uh, any type of love for my partner because I really had to I had to find it. I'm still actively finding it, you guys like right now, right? I didn't see it. I didn't see it with black lesbians because a lot of time black women have this idea that if you go through anything hard or hurtful in your relationship, you're supposed to just leave. These the lesbian relationships are made up of two black women. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. So so I didn't find any. I really didn't find any. And I feel like it's important to show people that in LGBT relationships, we go through the same problems yeah. that heterosexual people go through because you could Google or YouTube hella, hella heterosexual couples talking about how they work through infidelity. Right. But you won't find it for us. I, I also yeah. want to co-sign that as well, I add to that and say, you know, we have uh, so many negative comments in general. Um, but for the, it's worth it because of the amount of positive comments that come into our DMs or just the people that say, I'm glad you guys are doing this because I'm currently going through this or I'm looking for this uh, advice. I want to grow. I'm trying to learn. Like people that are tuning in that actually follow us that care, um, they're, they're, they're here for positivity. They're here to gain some type of knowledge. And um, that's, that's what makes it worth it to be transparent. It, we don't want the negativity. It's going to come with the territory. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We both know that. And then some days, you know, I'm getting beat up right now on the fucking internet. And I get so far down. And she tells me, you know, you know, well, before we did this, we knew this was going to happen. Like, yeah. you know, and she tries to recenter me back because it is depressing. It is tough to be that bad guy on the fucking internet right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. But, you know, the positive stuff is what makes it worth it. And that's why we're doing it. And I'm hurting you guys. She let me down, bro. I internally this morning we had a great night last night so we we went to bed we cuddled this morning i had a moment because the same type of cuddling that you're doing in bed with me i got a flash of you doing that same kind of cuddling with somebody else or yesterday she sent me a text that said i miss you and i had to tell her i really need to take a pause from this conversation and her you know she asked why and i, I told her because I read text messages where you said you missed somebody else. So just give me, I just need, I just need, I, I just need like first you said that. earlier, something, the anchor, they're anchor. Yeah. Away, but they in, the memories. When she I'm, said I'm it, I, I acknowledged it. And <laughs> it was just like, let's, all right, let's take, take your space. I, you know what I'm saying? Take your space, da, 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 da. And then you got the space and then we continue the night. But also being, communicating those things as well is what helps, helps. Yeah. And when you're done with the conversation or you can't talk about it anymore to just say, all right, I need a pause on this. So, yeah, it's just acknowledgement all together and just communicate it. Yeah. What's been the reaction from your friends and family? When um, I say the family, I mean close friends and family, not followers, not fans, not fanatics, not associates, yeah. not coworkers. Right. Close friends and family. Yeah. Because the thing I found out about situations like this is you two can work it out, make it work, move on. But the family and friends is like, oh, no, bitch. I don't want um, to see her again. I'm fine. I'm good. We, we put this out. We let people know what happened. But we haven't asked for anybody's advice. Um, our relationship is something that we need to work on together. Um, our family has been super supportive. Um, my sister went through, she's been married for over 10 years. She went through infidelity in her marriage. Um, I don't, sorry, uh, oops. <laughs> I'm sorry, don't get mad. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but, but, um, but she reached out to Kia, right? 
and not to give her any type of advice just just because that's her sister too and just to talk um our club we we've only really been talking on like an everyday basis to literally a couple of friends and they're the same people for both of us um and they're just really supportive with whatever we need um to help us work through it then th that's what they're there for um or they've created group messages where they're just checking in on both of us they'll pull her aside to check on her mental pull me aside check on my mental um mm -hmm. no one's really given us any like they've given her more advice i like i know that lacy doesn't trust you right now i know that lacy's going through this period where it, it, what you're saying is going in one ear and coming out the other, the other um she's asked them for advice of like maybe small other things that she could do that maybe she's missing um and they've been our our family and our friends have been supportive, super supportive. you've been super supportive yeah. um i think that's what you need to make this work and the people who either one of us have felt like wouldn't be supportive are not people who are going through this with us at all right and they shouldn't be because they're going to add to it and then, like i said there's some people that are vulturing they pretend to be friends but they smell blood in the water and now they're like okay here's my chance to bite yeah right so i'm, I'm just I was just being very cognizant of that when I sent you guys on message. Like, please take this down because now it's blood in the water. They start in the circle, and I'm just like, "Oh, y'all like shit. These comments, y'all don't want them to be together no way. You shouldn't be coming at all. I know you're trying to get it done. I can yeah. you walk up to you and be like, "Hey, what's up with her? Or what's up with her? They're together. Leave it alone." That's the thing too. So like, also, um, there's no reason. I, 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 you know, she even said it earlier. I'm usually used to talking to people when I'm going through things like. Cause I know I can get in my head and make shit up or, you know, just my perception is going to get whatever. And I just be trying to vent and trying to understand, you know, I want people to tell me the truth, but then you sit back and you realize that there are some people that just aren't for what you are for. They're Absolutely. not supporting the actual union that you have your marriage. They don't want you to actually be here or whatever they want. They want to convince you otherwise. But if you've made it, a choice in your heart and your soul and your mind that you're going to fix your marriage and you want to save your marriage. You need to only surround yourself if you're going to talk to people with people that are already supportive of the actual union and actually care about the two of you. And also going forward to finding like a therapist and things like that. I don't need somebody to tell, to tell me not to be with her or vice versa. Like we're, we, we right. want to fix our marriage. You want to make it work. So we only want if we're going to talk, yeah and that's all we're care that's all yeah. yeah yeah but for the most part we um, do talk more to yeah we talk to i talk to her more than anybody else in the fucking world so <laughs> you know and i'm over communicating now because i know the lack of communication is what got me here so it's it's yeah it's it's a journey but you know yeah. i'm trying she's trying and i get it so so internet let's 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 try something a little different i know a lot of times we can look from the outside in at a situation and say, oh, this happened. They just need to not be together. But when we say two people who are saying we really want to be together, we really want to work this out. Ain't no hands being thrown. Ain't no deadly, ain't no blood nowhere, nothing like that. It's not a physical destruction of somebody. Can we actually try to put some good energy towards this relationship, healing, working out, let's give it a second chance. And like I said, again, a second chance is not for everybody. Yeah. But it's for when two people want it, it's for when two people are safe, secure, and happy and moving forward in a reunification. Reconstitution is not always a bad thing. And we need to accept it. Everybody has to do what's best for them. I see all the love there. A lot of people say, me, I love y'all. Keep your head up and fuck everybody else. <laughs> I wish y'all the best. Communication is key. Yes, for the good energy. So there are people rooting for you. And I feel like there are more people rooting for you than against you. Um, but you know, when you were looking at the comments, you don't look for the good comments. <laughs> you went to see what somebody is saying bad about you. But, um, Mikey, like, somebody said, I, th you know me, right? They said that I, Kia had to help me work through my, um, alcoholism with wine. <laughs> I need to tell y'all something real quick. I like my liquor to taste like liquor. Okay. I don't drink wine like that. <laughs> I am a rum drinker get it right <laughs> wine it's never been wrong with a cup when i've been around here she'd be like look this ain't wine <laughs> don't worry about it do you want some no <laughs> you know so, i want for the turn up guys i'm like the party person so there is that but i i don't, I don't be at home 
drunk. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not doing that. I don't Definitely. struggle with alcoholism. So how has this affected you two working together? Have you put some rules in place when it comes to cast and crew and policies and stuff? And first year, I'm really glad that you were able to be open and say that, hey, this happened with somebody who was on the show. Because uh, one of the things I admonish a lot of the, um, the gay web creators in Atlanta about is dating and messing with their talent. I, I, I like I said, I personally discourage it. Like you said, no shit when you sleep. Um, what are some things you put in place to make sure like this never happens again? Because it doesn't have to happen between you and somebody else on the crew. It can be between two crew members. It can be between a production assistant and a crew member. It just causes problems because now I'm sure you have to recast a girl or are you writing her out of the series? Like I'm not doing the show at all. So there's that. Um, as far <laughs> as like things that we've implemented wait, 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 before. Wait, 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 hold on, Lacey, let's, wait, wait a minute. Gifted is done? Yeah. Period. Kayla's well, gonna recast her, so there's that. That's not it. Um, no, we're not doing a show. Don't do that. There's multiple well, facets in that. There's multiple facets in that. That's what you're gonna um, say because of how you feel, but that's not the reality of what happened. As far as so, get it in my show. Um, as far as what we've done for our projects and going forward, we have not had a huge problem with. Um, stuff like this on yeah. our sets. The only show that I've, I've worked on with her who have, that have had this problem it has been gifted with their people. So that's, that's, that's the environment of that show and the other creator and the other people that work on that show. Um, those people don't necessarily work on like all of our projects. So yeah. that's them, that's their environment. We didn't, this didn't happen because she was looking for somebody on our set. Uh, or you know what I mean? Like I wasn't looking for. It. Yeah, like, I wasn't purposely casting people to. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what some people might do. You know, you can't. You don't know. Yeah. But that's not what happened in this situation. So yeah. Okay. Okay. I know. I just noticed that some companies actually so like a non prioritization policy between. Anybody. Yeah. Like, if we're gonna be filming on location, or if we're gonna be filming something that's gonna take a while, then yeah, I have, I have, I, I write in non prioritization in our contracts. Yes. Um. But for everyday projects, for, for web series, you're filming a web series for a period of time and everybody has their own lives. And for the most part, they're all still hanging out. Like that, do y'all just don't let it affect my business because that's what I don't like me pers on, on a personal level. Yeah. Um, rules that we've implemented for our actual relationship, I just have to be honest and tell her, hey, look, in real life, we not, we not, we not, <laughs> We not doing this again, even though you know it happened a time, well past when we were doing this. We ain't doing it again. <laughs> we it's just, just, right. just talk about it. We don't joke about it. It's this isn't. Close. Yeah, we tried it. Didn't work. You failed the test. We not doing it again. So we drop in that class. <laughs> okay, like I said, that's that's not for everybody. Like I said, for some people, it does work, um, and for you guys, it just didn't work. Um, and that's what's great. That's what's good for your relationship. And we just have to respect that. Um, what do you want everybody to know in closing? Like from each one of you, I want each one of you to tell me, what do you guys want to know in closing? So let's do this. Tell me what you learned and what you now love about yourself after this process. Go ahead. Um, it's a lot of, I don't have a lot of things to say that I love about myself after going through this process. Um, I will say that I don't have a lot of things to say. That what I've learned? About what I've learned about it is a lot of shit. Um, I've learned that um, my communication skills with my wife have not been where they should be. I've made a lot of excuses. Um, I've learned that uh, I have a lot of stuff in my head right now. I know it's like it's it's like I said it's the process of a difficult conversation. It's a lot of mixed feelings, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, and everything in between. I the same thing I love that you feel love about yourself, um, Freshy, is that you are a seeker of truth, and you are willing to go down a hard path towards forgiveness and towards working things out to get to a better place than you were at before. That's strength. That's bravery. Because, like you said. You can leave her with those feelings and walk away from the situation. And you'll probably move along faster. But for her, that anchor's going into that next relationship and that next relationship and that next relationship. 
So I commend you for having the bravery to say, hey, I fucked up. Um, I got to fix this, and we got to work on this together. Come on, girl. Let's go. Let's do this. So take some pride in that about yourself, okay? Hey, y'all, if this don't work, I'm going back to the other side. No, <laughs> no bro. Uh <laughs> tell, me, tell me something that you know, that you, you know, that you learn from this and something that you love about it yourself. Yeah. Um, process. I've learned two things. Um, over the course of the past few years, I've been really working on growing as a person and growing emotionally and being able to control my emotions because old Lacey, you heard her and she has been victim and she's gonna get you back 10 times worse and she's gonna love it and laugh while she does it. But new Lacey, <laughs> new Lacey doesn't always, I didn't, I didn't go that route. I didn't go that route. I didn't kill the girl, thought about it, maybe tried. I didn't do it. I didn't kill her. I didn't kill my wife. I wasn't destructive to my home. Um, for me, that's huge because my anger in the past has taken over my entire being. Like you guys have no idea, no idea. So one, I went through this and realized I have grown, but two, I've also learned that you can't put anybody on a gold plated pedestal. Um, I didn't realize that my wife was capable of this kind of hurt. I didn't think I was going to be in a marriage uh, that involved any kind of grief for real um, because I just didn't think she was capable. Had anybody asked me, I would have said, not my wife, somebody else's wife maybe, but not mine. Um, what I learned is that you can't put people on that like godly pedestal. Anybody is capable of anything. And I know it sucks to say you have to, you have to lead you have to lead with like lead that way in your life. Um, I still love everything about myself. Y'all know me. <laughs> um, I I I didn't internalize this as something that I did, and it wasn't a bag of bones I was gonna carry. Um, I'm I'm the issues that we have in our marriage. There's two people here. We both are at fault. The 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 things that she did that is on her and I refuse to carry that bag of bones. So I still love everything about myself. And I do still think that I'm a queen, bro. Okay. Out here. And I'm still good for a fucking pull up. I will fight you. I haven't. And that's bro. But <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm not carrying that weight. I'm really not. Does it affect me mentally, emotionally? Yeah, but I'm not carrying that weight. I got you. I got you. Um, before I go any further, you guys, if you guys want to support um, the influencers that are right here on this live, you can go ahead and buy a badge. They're about 2 or $3. The money goes directly into our pockets and not into Instagram. Um, before I close out, I'm going to let a few people ask some questions um, to Lacey and Freshie. You can drop them right there in my question box, and I will read them aloud to them. So um, any questions for Lacey, Freshie, or even myself? Um, Somebody right did now. ask a question that I did want to answer. Hold on, let me find it. It was a really good question. I think I saw it, but I can't remember. I can't remember what it was either. I was trying to remember. Somebody said I'm rooting for everybody black, and that's all of y'all. Oh, thank you so much. You're trying to buy a badge. You're like two dollars. No. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Oh yeah, it is. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can't. Oh, no. I can't answer that too. So somebody <laughs> asked me, Lacey, do you think age played a part in uh, or immaturity? I think that a lot of things play a part with how people handle different things. Um, I don't necessarily think it's age as much as I do think it's experience. If you've never been in, in, a, in a particular situation, you really don't know what you'll do when you're in that situation. I, I have, like I told y'all earlier, I've done everything two, three, four, five times. I have cheated, I have gone I have been cheated on. I have dealt with extreme hurt from my partner and I acted like a maniac <laughs> right the very first time that happened. Or when I have cheated on people in the past, because I, when I say I cheated, it was not on her. Y'all will go to the blogs and say I was cheating on her. I wasn't. Um, but when I have cheated on people in the past, honestly, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I was just like, damn, I'm still here. Can we work through it? Like, the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> Right. Oh, you know what? There's a very serious thing that I left out that we need to talk about real quick. The blogs, okay? 
because I saw some links where they were, where these people were actually acting like they know y'all and making YouTube videos and posting on Lipstick Alley. And no. I was just like, do these people no. even know y'all? Then what was the motive of posting this Here's right here? Here's the thing. <laughs> here is the I actual said, fucking thing. Because Anybody that know us, know us, aren't on none of this shit. They're not even responding to none of this shit. They might talk to us in person, might send us an actual text, but like the stuff that, the other shit that's going on blogs are people that follow us or they see something trending, so they click on it and then they create their own scenario or do they research a little bit, make their posts, and then the people in the comments, they've already admitted, I don't know this couple, but I just feel like this, 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 is this, or they just reaching for things, but nobody, knows us personally because if you knew us personally y'all be the same way mikey's talking to us now is the same way anybody that know us personally you're talking to us it's not we're not no nobody no like that shit it just pisses ew, it just makes me so angry it makes me so fucking angry it should make you angry and also let me put a friendly notification out there about media okay just because somebody picks up a camera creates a channel or say if they want to have a platform does not make the media you need to check their credentials if they're not moving with facts, hard facts, and are experts in what they're talking about. You don't yeah. need to consider them a source of information. The that's the difference between crazy. a blogger and that's the difference between a journalist. Okay? Well, how oh, yeah, these are definitely bloggers. Go off of definitely. Bloggers go off of hearsay. I heard they said what somebody told me, and a journalist goes off facts. This is what happened. This is what is. This no, is they the thinking they're going off facts, though. Like, okay. The person saying I struggle with alcoholism with wine, oh, no damn wine, I like liquor. Uh, so, or people wait a minute, that, we got some questions right here, y'all. It says, Lacey, would you say cheating in the past helped you be more understanding towards Freshie? Yeah. Okay. Lacey, what steps have slash are you taking to gain trust in Freshie? I don't think that's a, what am I doing? Uh, I, that's a question for her, y'all. <laughs> that's, I, I'm here. So what steps are you taking to gain trust in Freshie? Um, I mean, she's going to therapy. She's doing the work. That The willingness yeah. is, is in itself the first act of trust, I feel like. I, what I'm not doing is I'm not going through her text messages. I'm not looking for things. I, I don't think that there's really anything to find. I'm really trying to believe what she says. And that's so hard when someone was able to lie to you for as long as she was able to lie to me. Um, but for me, for my own, what, like my own peace of mind, what I'm not doing is I'm not making her share her location. I'm not asking her where she's going everywhere. I'm still giving her the freedom to show me that what she's saying right now is real without having to pressure her into like showing me that what she's saying is real. I, I will say that the moment all this stuff happened, I immediately turned on my, my locations. I took the passwords off all of my devices. Like I just, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not withholding. I'm not going to withhold anything from you. So, I mean, yeah. And I didn't know. Cause I, I'm not checking when she leaves the house. I'm not immediately going to see her location. Cause you know what, if she's going to continue to do her dirt, then that is the proof for me. So, well, that's what I'm not doing. <laughs> I'm still getting her for freedom. Okay. All right. Yeah, this was an amazing conversation. I want to personally say, you know, thank you guys for again for allowing me to conduct this interview. You two are good friends of mine. You know what I mean? Um, and it's really funny that this whole live situation came through fruition from a uh, difficult conversation that me and Freshie had one night when I was in her car. And she just telling me, you got to stop this. You're coming off like this. I've been telling you to try this for years. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, why not? Why do it? Then Lacey helped me come up with a name and stuff. And I was like, usually I was like, Mike, just do it. If you talk, if you build it, people will come. And, you know, here we are. We have this great conversation. This is really, really good. Um, thank you guys for pouring into me. And I hope tonight I've done my part and helped to pour into you because I do and would like for the two of you to be together. Um, Love is so hard, y'all, and it's so rare, and it seems like in modern times it's becoming even more and more rare. And I believe in real love, not fairy tale love. Um, fairy tale love was filled with princesses being saved by princes and them having dragons fighting for them. I believe in nowadays, in 2021, every lady needs to slay her own dragon. And I think this dragon that you two are facing is something that you can slay together. 
So keep at it. Be your own knight. Be knights for each other. You don't need a prince. You got each other. So I need a prince. I'm about to leave. No I'm kidding. <laughs> I do want to say that um, <laughs> I don't want people to feel like I'm taking it lightly that Lacey's decided to stay and try to make this work. I don't. I, I do want to throw that out there as well. Yes. And I want, I, there is daily gratitude. I am every single day. I'm just like, thank you. Thank you. Or I'm showing you in some shape or form that I am appreciative. Um, I can't live my life without this woman. I, I, I genuinely can't like, I, I, it's, I, I have been accountable for what I've done and I'm having my honest conversations with my wife. Um, but I am also still appreciative because Mikey, I was scared to do this goddamn interview. I didn't want to do it. Honestly, I had a conversation. I, right? I had a conversation the other day. I did, I girl, I, I did not Let want to do me. it at all. I did I, it. I know you didn't want to, but I'm <laughs> glad you came to me. Somebody who actually gives a fuck about who cares about you, who loves you. Which is the only way. That was the yeah. only way it was gonna happen because I was not way. doing it. It's the only way. The, the, what we're doing right here is what I tell people all the time. If you have a friend who is in media, who's a journalist, who's a blogger. It's not that they don't need to write or say anything about you. You need to let them get in front of you so they can sift and filter and put the best story out possible for you. Period. It's called spinning people. This is what y'all need to learn. <laughs> this is what y'all need to learn. This is not only is this productive for your relationship, it's good brand management. Yeah. Because I don't think any of y'all, and I'm saying this to any web series, boy, creator, content creator, anybody I've ever worked with that's been friends with me and call themselves having a falling out. This is what you do when your friend does this work. Because somebody once told me, if people don't want you writing about them, they shouldn't behave badly. However, that same friend can spin that for you. The story is going to come out. You want to know TMZ or you want to know my personal situation where I can say, okay, well, this and this happened, but this is what they're doing to fix the situation. Because right. TMZ is not going to tell the shit. And that's I'm why it's sure. important. And that's what's important. Yeah. Choose the friend, y'all. Not to get <laughs> <laughs> that out there. I'm just letting y'all know. Like I love y'all. We're going to have a good night, guys. Tomorrow, I will be back with another one on one. And, guys, I'll be having a difficult conversation of my own. You know, dating for me is not easy. It's never no. been easy. So, I'm going to have two people on that I've dealt with in dating. And we're going to talk about where I went wrong with them, why they decided to walk away from the situation for me. And what I need to do to work on myself so I can be better at dating. You know, I want to have my own love too one day, y'all. So wish me luck because tomorrow I'm in the fucking hot seat on my own situation. And it's going to be real when we talk about I'm a bad dater one-on-one. -on -one. Who are you talking with? Huh? Who are you talking with? Who am I talking with? The secret. The secret. It's going to be an ex-girlfriend. It's going to be an almost ex-boyfriend. So. That one? <laughs> That's exciting. Okay, well, yeah. We tune in. Right? <laughs> y'all tune in. I love y'all. I'm trying to tune in. <laughs> Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Mikey, send us the video. I will. <laughs> Bye.